Good morning, everyone. This is John Goodman with the Raleigh Chamber of Commerce. I am the VP of Government Affairs, and we are just about ready to get started. We've got a full lineup today and lots of interest. Thanks to everyone for being on this virtual town hall with Congressman Price and Director Stiff this morning. We appreciate um, everyone's attendance, interest, and support. We at the Raleigh Chamber are aware of the hard and trying and uncertain times we are all dealing with right now, and particularly our small businesses across the community. We're here to let you know um, we'll support you any way we can. There's a lot of moving parts going on at the local, state, and federal level, and today's hope is that we will be able to get an update on the relief efforts and the CARES Act uh, hitting the highlights. We all realized that the federal legislation was passed a week ago, so lots more to understand and learn about what is actually in the bill and how it all plays out. And we also want to connect you with the right SBA folks as implementation is gearing up. So with that, again, be patient as we have technical issues. We're working through those. Um, we'll go through the run of the show and have, ask Congressman Price to give us a brief overview from a federal perspective. And then we will ask Director Stiff to give us a brief overview of his efforts in his office and what they're working on. And then we will open it up for questions. Um, as a housekeeping note, we do have close to 600 folks on the call. We've had over 100 questions pre-submitted, so be patient. We're going to try to get to everyone's questions that we can, the time will allow. We are recording this call, and we post it on our website later today. So if you're unable to get through, or if you know of someone who was unable to get through, please direct them to the website, and they can hear the call in its entirety. Uh, with that, uh, when you do ask a question, please recognize the individual you would direct the question to so that they will know how to respond. And again, thank you on behalf of the Raleigh Chamber CEO, Adrian Cole, myself, and our entire staff. We um, greatly appreciate you being with us today for this virtual town hall. With that, I will kick it over to Congressman Price. As we all know, Congressman Price, um, as been in the U.S. House since 1987. He is a dear friend to the business community. He is passionate about the constituents he serves. Um, he is on the House Appropriations Committee, along with a number of other committees, and represents the fourth North Carolina Congressional District. So with that, Congressman, I'll kick it off to you and let you give us an update. All right. Thank you. and Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be with you uh, by this uh, kind of unfamiliar means. We're all kind of learning our way uh, technologically. So I, uh, I, I, it, uh, it, it has great possibilities to incorporate, I understand, something like 600 people on the line this morning. So, uh, so that's great. And I'll, I'll be brief, but be uh, ready to, to respond to your questions. And very happy to have uh, Thomas Stith, who's, of course, our state director and, a, and an expert on these matters. Uh, uh, to uh, to to uh, also field questions. Let me, before I start, say that if you uh, don't get your question answered or if you need more in the way of uh, briefing, we're going to have uh, one that my congressional office is sponsoring this afternoon at 2 o'clock. So go to our website and get the details about that. Uh, Thomas Stith will also be on that. Uh, at, uh, that'll be kind of a continuation, actually, of the discussion we're about to have. And Scott Doherty from the Small Business Technology Development Center will also be on uh, on call. So uh, so join us then. And then uh, next week we're going to uh, take the aspect of this program, this loan program that is going to be for the first time available to uh, the certain. Here, my phone. We're going to uh, we're going to focus on that at another meeting to be announced uh, next week. So the. Um, this is uh, this is obviously something none of us uh, anticipated, and uh, we're, uh, we're we're all dealing with it in our own way. I hope everybody and the sound of my voice is is as healthy and well, and and uh, is uh, is able to, to kind of keep things to, together. It's important that we all do that, and also that we express gratitude for the people who are uh, 
helping us do that. First of all, the medical providers on the front line who are who are uh, sacrificing um, every day to uh, to to uh, prepare us and to treat those who uh, who need to be treated, and then the support system in our in our community, everybody from uh, uh, grocery workers and pharmacists to uh, to people to the sanitation workers, they, just people keeping us going at this critical time. We uh, I've never had a more of a, an awareness, I think, of, of exactly how uh, much uh, uh, we depend on all sorts of, of people to, uh, to sustain us. So uh, I, on behalf of all of us, want to express that gratitude and also to our, uh, to our state officials who are doing, um, I think, a, a heroic job in, in, uh, in, in getting out information and, and overseeing this uh, this response, uh, our health and human services, emergency uh, management, and, uh, and and the governor, of course, uh, the whole the whole team. Uh, the federal response has uh, come in three three pieces of legislation that were enacted uh, quickly, uh, and in a uh, you know there was some there was, as, as you'd expect with something of this magnitude there was some jockeying and some uncertainty but uh, in the end we came together on a bipartisan basis and passed three significant pieces of legislation and my role this morning is just to quickly uh, summarize that and then and then move on to uh, to Thomas uh, Stiff's a more detailed account of the business uh, how to access the, the business loans and and then to respond to your questions but um, these uh, these three uh, three these three bills dealt with uh, the emergency. The, fir the first one mainly the health aspects, uh, funding for research on a vaccine and on various treatments, uh, paid uh, paid uh, sick leave and and family and medical leave for for people who are affected by the the crisis or their families are. Uh, so, uh, some additional support immediately for state and local public health departments. Uh, uh, the state Medicaid uh, program, uh, and and then and and the re and the hospitals. Uh, we we also have some additional food aid, nutrition aid, uh, reconfigured, of course, for the kid. The fact that kids aren't in school, so that for especially aimed at school school children and also uh, older older people. Uh, so a range of of emergency provisions in those first two bills. Uh, dealing with uh, with immediate needs. Then the biggest of the three package is, packages is the one we'll mainly be discussing this morning, the so-called uh, CARES Act. And I'll just uh, summarize it by saying that for affected individuals and families, there are three main sources of support in the in the CARES Act: the uh, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP for small businesses and nonprofits, is uh, is one of a triumvirate of programs designed to address the needs of uh, individuals and families and and they do this in a complementary way uh, and, and the first of course the first element is the direct one-time payments of twelve hundred dollars to most American adults with an additional five hundred dollars for children under 17 uh, the second is uh, the uh, supplemental unemployment benefits uh, we uh, that will be worked through the uh, state unemployment office, and it will supplement the state benefits, which uh, are not terribly generous in North Carolina, but this will uh, provide uh, an additional $600 a week for an additional period of 13 weeks and for uh, a wider range of, uh, of people. In other words, the self-employed, the gig workers, people of that sort will be eligible uh, to apply for unemployment where they wouldn't normally be eligible through the through the state system, and then finally the, uh, the 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 small business piece, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, that's um, that's going to be uh, uh, the, the guidance has has just now been sent down from the uh, from the relevant federal departments, and so uh, the uh, that that program is going to be uh, launched uh, today. We we, uh, we we of course anticipate a, a great demand and and, and uh, some just going to be a real challenge to get this launched in an orderly way so people can access it. And uh, Thomas Stith, I'm sure, will have more uh, information about how that's uh, going to work specifically. 
but uh, it, this will work for a lot of small businesses through the through the lenders they already uh, have relationships with, and uh, for others it'll be a matter of establishing that relationship. And 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 of course the financial services community uh, has put out their announcements about uh, the the way they plan to handle this and and to cooperate with it. And so all hands need to be on deck to make this uh, make this work. But the the idea is to uh, keep uh, businesses uh, in business to uh, to keep their payrolls intact and uh, that's uh, for a lot of people uh, that's going to be the best way they can see their way through this uh, so the businesses can pick up when we uh, come out the other end of this but in the meantime people's economic uh, ec people are sustained economically and don't have to go on unemployment that uh, that is that is the goal. That's what I mean. These are these are complementary approaches to the uh, to the needs and the strains that we know individuals and families uh, and and many of your employees are uh, are, are going to face. Um, there are other pieces of this that I won't go into right now. There there is there is uh, some much needed uh, supplementary funding for uh, for hospitals, community health centers, other other health uh, provider uh, institutions. Uh, there is uh, some direct support for uh, for state governments and the expenses they're bearing. Uh, there are, as the chairman of the Transportation and Housing Appropriations Subcommittee, uh, we've crafted some uh, some support for uh, for local governments uh, providing uh, homeless assistance, uh, providing uh, some, some supplementary funding for the public housing agencies, uh, some. Uh, backfill funding when, when rentals will fall short or, or there are other expenses incurred in, in providers of housing for the elderly and for the, the disabled. Uh, there's going to be money flowing to, uh, to shore up our, uh, our transit systems, our bus and light rail and commuter rail transit systems around the country, uh, and uh, as well as Amtrak and the airport and, and, uh, and the, uh, the kind of uh, uh, and, and aviation in general, including general aviation. I can go into that if you have specific questions, but the main point today is to focus on the small businesses and the direct access they can have, both through this PPP program, and then of course there are the traditional uh, emergency programs uh, in the Small Business Administration. Here too, Thomas can give you more detail than I can. But uh, I'm talking there about the economic injury disaster loans, the economic emergency economic injury grant advances those programs that also is being activated in funding as a part of this uh, program so with that i hope that's a, a good bird's eye view and we can uh, proceed and and have whatever questions you have thank you very much thank you congressman price we appreciate again you being with us today and providing us with that overview uh, undoubtedly there'll be lots of questions at the end um director stiffs have you been able to join uh, yes, John, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Good to hear your Good. voice. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for being with us also. Just as a way of introduction for our audience, uh, Director Stith was named District Director in September of 2019. He oversees an office that drives economic development by assisting local entrepreneurs start and grow businesses. He also directs the implementation of SBA programs related to accessing capital, business advising, and governmental contracts. With that, Mr. Director, I'll turn it over to you to give us a overview of what you are working on in relation to uh, everything that has come down from the federal uh, process the last several weeks. Sure, John. First, let me thank the Raleigh Chamber for hosting today's town hall. Uh, it's extremely important for not only our business community, but our community in, in general to understand the economic opportunities that are available to them. I uh, also would like to thank Congressman Price for his service, uh, knowing we've been well represented in, in Washington and during these challenging times, that is extremely important. Uh, first, let me just say that as we all know, uh, small businesses are, are key to our local and state economy. We have over 900,000 small businesses in North Carolina and they employ 1.7 million people. So while this obviously is an economic issue, this is a community issue. 
the, the viability of our small businesses are key to our families throughout North Carolina and SBA is standing prepared to work with, with small businesses throughout this state as we go through this just tremendous crisis. First, I'd just give an overview of how we, where we are right now as far as the S, uh, Small Business Administration is concerned. I wanted to highlight a couple of the key initiatives moving forward. Uh, as Congressman Price mentioned, obviously the emergency uh, injury disaster loan uh, is gonna be one key initiative in, in today's launch of the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, on March 18th of this uh, of this year, obviously, uh, SBA Administrator Jovita Carranza uh, declared the entire state of North Carolina disaster. And unfortunately, as we know, as North Carolinians, we, we uh, have experienced hurricanes, we've experienced wildfires in Western North Carolina, but this is the first time in, in at least my uh, memory as a North Carolinian uh, that the entire state when all 100 counties have been declared a disaster. What that means for businesses, small businesses throughout our state is that they are now eligible to pursue economic injury disaster loans or for short EIDL. But the economic injury disaster loans will afford small businesses the opportunity to seek out funding up to two million dollars uh, to cover economic injuries as a result of the COVID-19 virus. In addition to the EIDL or economic injury disaster loans, there is also an economic injury emergency advance, which is in the amount of, uh, can go up to $10,000. So when businesses go online, and I would like to just give one website, there are various ways to get to the programs, but one website that will list all the current initiatives from SBA is sba.gov forward slash coronavirus. That's sba.gov forward slash coronavirus. And when a small business uses our online portal, they can apply for the EIDL emergency uh, or EIDL uh, and emergency grant. The IDLs, as I mentioned, go up to $2 million. It's a 30-year term. Uh, both small businesses and nonprofits are eligible to apply. The interest rate for small businesses would be 3.75% and 2.75% for nonprofits. Now with the emergency advance, businesses or nonprofits can uh, be are eligible up to $10,000 for immediate uh, distribution. Those funds are not repayable. So that is where they are literally a grant. So they are designed to provide immediate funding to uh, applicants to uh, within three days of approval to receive that initial grant while your application is being reviewed. And this EIDL uh, loan is el eligible for small businesses, whether you are a restaurant, you are a, a local barber shop or you are a small manufacturer, you are eligible to apply for this loan as long as you're within uh, the, the bounds of North Carolina because every county in the state has been declared. And so I wanna leave time in the end for, for question and answer. So that is available now. Uh, because of the type of a disaster, SBA will not have uh, sites for individuals to come into. Typically, uh, in a disaster response, we would have on-the-ground support. But at this point, if you go to that website, there is an online portal for you to uh, fill out your application and submit for both the EIDL and the emergency advance. As Congressman Price mentioned, uh, the U.S. Uh, Congress passed on March 27th the CARES Act, and within the CARES Act, there was a significant um, allocation of funding, $349 billion, to go toward the Paycheck Protection Program. The Paycheck, Protect, Paycheck Protection Program is designed to keep our workers working, and it gives an incentive for small business owners to maintain people on their payroll. These loans are up to $10 million, depending, and they're derived from looking at your payroll costs, uh, and that includes broad definition, not only your payroll costs, your benefits that you pay employees. Uh, so they are available, and that program does start today. Uh, that's up to $10 million. 
and therefore a term of two years with the interest rate of 1%. But the, but the benefit of trying to maintain employees gives these loans a forgivable component. So if a business applies for this and receives the PPP or Paycheck Protection Program loan, they, we will look at the first eight weeks. Those funds that are dedicated toward uh, payroll costs, and again, that includes not only direct salaries, but that includes rent, that includes mortgage payment, utilities, that portion that is used during the first eight weeks is forgivable. And so that will be deducted from the amount of the, the original loan, and then the, the remaining balance will go into that two-year 1% uh, terms. So we, we at SBA, and obviously uh, as Congress passed that, we feel these two programs will provide immediate uh, cash and, and economic infusion into our small business community. Two additional loans that will benefit uh, small businesses and existing businesses are the SBA Express Bridge Loan, and they're designed for people that typically have a relationship with the bank. They may have an SBA loan existing, these bridge loans go up to $25,000. There's a smaller underwriting or, or a more streamlined rather underwriting um, process and they're designed to provide initial economic infusion into businesses while they're going through the economic injury disaster loan process. And then finally for existing SBA um, uh, in, uh, businesses that have SBA loans, whether it's the, the 7A or the 504, those are our two flagship loans. Uh, we are providing debt relief through the CARES Act, and that will provide for those loans to defer payment. Actually, SBA pays for six months of those loans so that the business does not have that as an expense. So I, I will want to conclude here to give time. I know there, there are a lot of questions and especially with the payroll paycheck pay protection program that is literally launching today so it's going to take time to ramp up and we are asking for patience but the, the design of that program utilizing uh, the lending community we feel as it moves forward will make that a much much uh, more efficient program so the ppp in combination with the economic injury disaster loan we feel are two very immediate responses that will help small businesses across the state. And in closing, I would just like to repeat, to access information on all of the initiatives I just outlined, you would go to sba.gov forward slash coronavirus, and you will be able to access uh, additional information on it. Um, and um, I'll stop there. We, we, we do have support partners and resource partners throughout the state that can help small businesses actually walk you through the application process, uh, provide support. As Congressman uh, Price mentioned, uh, the small uh, uh, Scott Doherty with the Small Business and Technology and Development Centers, they are a resource partner that is funded partially by SBA. You have numerous women business centers across the state. So in addition to SBA support, we have resource partners that are ready and willing and able to support small businesses in North Carolina. So with that, John, I'll end so that we have adequate time for a question and answering for Congressman Price and myself. Okay, great. Thank you, Director Steth. We appreciate that overview. And we, of course, greatly appreciate everything you and your team are doing, all the assistance you're providing. We know this is a tough time. Uh, and for you all to be able to sort through this um, and work so diligently to help small businesses as they navigate this process, it really is appreciated. And we can't thank you enough for that. I think what we'll do now is I'll turn the platform over to Sarita Hargrove, who is on the government affairs team at the Raleigh Chamber. And Sarita will monitor the question and answer period. We have, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, uh, quite a few questions um, already submitted, but we'll try to go back and forth and ask some questions that were submitted and then hopefully allow, if technology permits, uh, some live questions um, as you have them. So if you will chime in with Sarita um, and let her know that you have a question um, and who it's to, then she'll get to you in the, in the order of the queue that you're in, um, and we'll do the best we can through this process. So with that, Sarita, uh, take over. 
We have now entered the Q&A portion of this meeting. As a reminder, please specify if the question is for Congressman Price or District Director Still. Our first question is for Director Still. What is the SBA's guidance to those early applicants who applied for the SBA recovery loans, but their applications were lost during the SBA, SBA application link switchover? What, if anything, can the city of Raleigh do to support the SBA's efforts in closing the loop for these small businesses? Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, what I would suggest and what we're suggesting for early applicants um, is to reapply. And I know that sounds daunting. Uh, and and, and I, I know there's a lot of uh, rumor and whatnot around the, the application process. But what we're encouraging individuals to do now is to reapply because if you are early applicant, the, the advance of a potential $10,000 grant was not available. Uh, that was a part of the uh, CARES Act and it became an additional benefit. The uh, online portal has been streamlined. Uh, I have talked to small businesses direct and they say it is very user friendly and, and the, the process goes through quickly and it gives the applicant the ability to not only apply for the EIDL loan, but you also, uh, literally there's a box you check to say, I'm interested in the $10,000 advance, up to $10,000 advance, that will be submitted. And I, my staff and I have already talked to individuals that um, have received that $10,000 advance. The, the goal is to distribute those funds to eligible borrowers within three days. So I would encourage again, to, to apply uh, through the new process because that gives you an additional benefit. Thank you. The next question is for Congressman. If any, what future stimulus packages do you foresee? I foresee uh, a continuing need to uh, respond to this crisis uh, and, uh, and then to uh, pivot to uh, the economic recovery that we all know we're going to, uh, to face. Uh, at the beginning, I talked about the three bills that we have passed thus far, the two $8 billion bills that mainly dealt with the immediate uh, health and, uh, and income and nutrition needs. And then this larger package, which, uh, which mainly Thomas and I are, are discussing today. Uh, there, um, there will be uh, some gaps. There already are gaps that we're learning about in, in bill number three. Uh, the, uh, for example, the, the situation of dependents who are, who are college students uh, in, in, uh, in the, the, the way they are handled in the uh, direct uh, payment program is just an example that uh, comes to mind. Many things like that that we're going to have to deal with in a, in a fourth bill. But then I think we're also going to need to, uh, to, to focus on the broader questions of economic recovery. And I don't I can't give you an exact time frame on that, but it uh, shouldn't be too long. I, I really shouldn't delay. In fact, I would hope in bill number four, we can uh, begin to, uh, to to move in that direction. The uh, And the analogy here uh, may well be the uh, Recovery Act after the, after the 07, 08 uh, economic downturn. Um, as you know, everybody knows we, we have, uh, a long backlog of infrastructure needs in this country that uh, have needed to be addressed and that unfortunately, politically, uh, it hasn't come together. It needs to come together. It needs to come together. And the, uh, the, uh, the in fact, that's one of the best ways, I think, to, to, to give uh, the economy a boost as well as to deal with some of the uh, direct impact of this, uh, of this crisis. Uh, and so we're we're already uh, thinking about what what that should look like in in bill number four or bill number five. So so yes, economic recovery very very uh, clearly going to be needed. This is going to have a huge economic impact, uh, recession if not a depression, and uh, getting out of it is 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 going to be a, a challenge that uh, we we are are going to have to face together. Thank you for that, Congressman. Next question is for Director Still. How will the SBA address the likelihood that the Paycheck Protection Program loan applications will exceed the $349 billion allocated for funds? 
Yes, uh, well, we're anticipating a significant response uh, and we'll monitor that. Um, as, as, as Congressman Price mentioned, this is uh, a recovery uh, similar, if not worse than the economic uh, recession that we had several years ago. Uh, so my understanding that is as, as the program is implemented, certainly SBA and uh, Treasury will monitor and there may be potential I'm sure request uh, if effective for additional funding. But at this point, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're getting uh, accurate and uh, quick information out to small businesses so that they can take benefit of the existing uh, funding for uh, the Paycheck Protection Program. My next question is for Director Still. For people who work from home, can we cover our business's share of the mortgage and utilities with the payroll protection program loan? A little bit detailed question, but my general response would be yes, if that is the way you typically um, represent your business, on, in particular on your tax returns, because what PPP uh, can't, uh, an allowable use would be mortgage or lease payments on your business, would be utility costs for your business. So I don't want to get into tax law, but if you are already recognizing it that way, and I know um, PPP is designed to also help uh, that um, you know private consultant or, or individual business owner, my assumption would be yes, but I would, I would clarify that uh, uh, as you go through the application process, but I would think it would. This question is also for you, Director. How is the SBA geared up to handle all these applications and reviews? You have talked about all this money that is available, but do you really have the resources to handle all the applications that will be coming in? Thank you. This certainly is a historic uh, disaster our country is facing, and this is the first time many of us have seen anything like this. Uh, we do feel like, as I mentioned earlier, as an example, with the web portal for the economic injury disaster loan, it has gone, in my direct knowledge, probably more through three to four iterations, all of them improving. One, one um, initiative that uh, Administrator Carranza instituted was embracing the private sector and working with the government, uh, and particularly with our IT resources. So we feel confident that we have the team on the ground that has put forth a, a very enhanced system, number one. And then number two, there is uh, a constant monitoring to see if it is being effective and efficient. Uh, there has also been a significant um, human resource uh, uh, staffing up, if you please. Uh, again, our administrator has talked to FEMA. We've gotten hundreds of employees uh, delegated over to our Office of Disaster Assistance, which is the uh, internal organization that is responsible for uh, the injury disaster, um, uh, economic injury disaster loans. So while we, we will continue to monitor the progress and processes, we feel like uh, we, we will have adequate resources. If not, we'll move forward to improve it. Can you also expand on what SBA options are available for small businesses, sole proprietors who have lost all of their business? Yes, I, I think the, um, in particular, the injury, economic injury disaster loan, if it would be, uh, and, and I wanna caution and say that these are recommendations. As a small business person, you'll have to decide which option is best for you as an individual business. But I would strongly encourage as a first step, the economic injury disaster loan. Um, that, is, that is what it is designed for. Um, and as I said, as an additional uh, component of the advance and those loans are up to $2 million. Uh, and so not knowing that person's specific situation, there are there's significant funding for small business in, in that uh, type of product. Um, and then take, uh, also pursue a review of the a paycheck protection program that might give the ability for the business uh, to retain and, and, and maintain until uh, there is a return to some level of normalcy. But the initial recommendation would be to pursue EIDL and also look at the uh, PPP as an option. This next question is also for you, Director. 
does the EIDL apply to small business owners with no employees? Short answer is yes. Next is what are the qualifications or parameters that the SA is following to accept or deny someone for the 10K advance and then for the EIDL? Yes, when you apply for the EIDL slash emergency advance, there'll be three basic areas that uh, the underwriters will look to. Uh, credit history, uh, not that there's a specific um, you know, credit rating, but they're looking for some type of uh, history for the business to see if it was a viable concern. Uh, the ability to repay, uh, not the, the uh, advance, because once again, the advance is literally a grant. Uh, that up to ten thousand uh, dollars is for the utilization by the business regardless of whether they get the the I, I, eidl loan uh, but they will look at the ability to pay repay the loan at some point in the future when the business resumes or is in a more normal business environment and then those loans that are twenty five thousand dollars and below there is no collateral that is sought by sba for loan 25,000 and higher, that will trigger SBA underwriters to look for some level of collateralization. That will not disqualify if there's not full collateralization, but because of the, the, the threshold of over 25,000, there will be a, a, a more review of potential collateralization of the EIDL loan. And not to drag it out, but in contrast, just we're talking about collateralization, uh, the payroll protection program does not uh, require collateralization for the loan. Someone would like to know how will the funds be distributed, line of credit or loan? Uh, for the EIDL, they are distributed to the to the small business. So these are literal loans. So they're not they're not um, they're not lines of credit. Uh, so, and for both of them, uh, for the pay, uh, pay, pay, Paycheck Protection Program, that again is is a loan as well. Um, and uh, just looking in, other thing I would like to say uh, to uh, businesses listening is to to remain engaged because it is a um, a changing environment. As Congressman Price mentioned, they're reviewing many things in Washington, so they may make tweaks and changes to the initiative. Um, but both of them are, are now designed as loans. Uh, and my point was going to be, I had information from uh, Secretary Mnuchin yesterday. Uh, SBA, obviously, and, and Treasury is trying to utilize direct deposits because of the environment, trying not to have people have to go out, although financial institutions are open, to have that direct deposit into accounts to minimize um, contact and to respect social distancing. The next question is, can a small business that utilizes utilizes a PEO claim alone for those payroll expenses under this program? Could, could you repeat the question? I'm not sure if I know, I'm familiar with the, the acronym. Can you repeat that? Can a small business that utilizes a PEO claim alone for those payroll expenses under this program? They didn't specify the acronym. I'm sorry, I was on mute. If you if you can send that question to me, I can follow up on that. I'm I'm not. Um, I don't want to give misinformation on that specific question. We'll do. The next question for you, that director, is if we furlough employees, is the loan forgiven, and what are the rules? Again, you went out a little bit. If they do what with their employees? If we furlough employees, is the loan forgiven? What are the rules? No, what, what the uh, PPP is designed for or is encouraged to maintain uh, payroll. So, and that's why you have that eight week look. What, what, and that if you maintain your payroll, then that portion that of the loan that was dedicated to payroll costs, uh, and they will allow some, some uh, actually it's 25% uh, could be go, go toward rent, um, mortgage, utilities, 
but because, and as we mentioned earlier, the, the, the funding is not unlimited at this point, the thought is at least 75% would go toward direct payroll costs, and that's salaries, benefits, health coverage. 25% could go to the other allowable uses, and that would be what would be assessed to reduce uh, the amount of full loan or the forgivable amount. If you reduce your payroll um, you know, by furlough or laying off, uh, then that would reduce the amount that would be forgiven. Thank you. I have another question for you. What is the last date that you must hire your employees back five for the eight week period in order to have your paycheck protection program forgiven? Yeah, that, that uh, the program uh, uh, was initiated today and it goes through June 30th of, of this year. Uh, so you would have to have your employees on board by June of this year. The next question is, are we able to access funds through the CARES Act if we have already applied for the SBA Economic Disaster Loan? Yes, if, if you've already applied for the EIDL um, and, and the subsequent potential emergency advance, that does not disqualify you from applying for the Paycheck Protection Program. Someone asked, what is the consequences if we sell our business within the eight-week period? Uh, it's a very uh, detailed question. I, I don't have direct guidance on that, but I would assume if it is a, a structured business, the obligations would go with the sale. But I, I'm, I, why don't you send that to me as well? Because there could be some implications with selling a business. Um, we literally got the guidelines last night. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure about that specific question. So if you could send that one to me as well, I'll make sure you get an answer though. Okay. And this is a clarifying question. Are businesses eligible to apply for both the EI Advance and the PPP? Yes, they can. Uh, the uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, as a part of that application, you can check literally check a box that requests the emergency advance of ten thousand dollars, and so that is one assessment. You may also um, apply for um, uh, the payroll protection program, paycheck protection program. Congressman, this question is for you. Um, someone would like a website address to find your two p.m. meeting with um, with your office. Um. Just uh, just Google our um, Google my my name and and go to our uh, main uh, our home page and and you'll have the information there. And, and and this is Thomas. I just had a thought to clarify the last question I had. Um, while you may have a EIDL and a payroll protect, uh, PPP you cannot use the funds for say if you were dedicating it toward payroll you couldn't use an eidl to pay payroll and the ppp but they have to be for different uses and i don't want to go down too deep in the weeds and confuse folks but in general you can apply for both but when you look at use of funds then you have to be mindful that you're not doing the same Congressman Price, this also this question is also for you. Will, will All right. when will independent contractors be able to access unemployment? The unemployment site does not show this as an option currently. When will they be able to access unemployment? Um, I think the uh, uh, they should they should go ahead and access the state. This comes through the state unemployment system, and so uh, that's uh, that's where this is uh, this is going to happen. The uh, the the immediate uh, access is for for people who would uh, normally be eligible for unemployment. There there is going to be some delay, I think, probably in uh, in dealing with the independent uh, contractors and the, uh, the the gig employee people and so forth. Uh, so, uh, just uh, as I think the guidance we've had is that uh, that should be up and running next week. 
but uh, th that has not been immediately available. I realize that. Thank you, Congressman. Okay, let, let me let me just elaborate a little bit. We we do have a resource guide that uh, that makes these things clear on my uh, website, and and let me just check that and make sure that it's absolutely clear. And if it needs to be made clearer, we will we will do so. We'll post that information, but. Uh, I, I think I'm right about that. There, that there is a weak delay in uh, in the in the people that you're describing, name, namely the, the the people newly included for uh, unemployment eligibility. The next question is for the director. Does the Paycheck Protection Program cover part-time employees? If so, will part-time salaries be part of the forgiveness in this loan? Yes, my understanding is it, it covers um, your employee costs, which would what you would show what that salary is for those part-time individuals. Um, but my understanding so far in, in reviewing the the guidelines, it would would cover those costs as well. So they would be a part of your overall payroll cost. I have another question for director. How quickly do you expect to be able to approve and fund the EIDL loan request? Uh, when the when the program launched, uh, our understanding from uh, our Office of Disaster Assistance was that the estimated uh, uh, processing time was between 18 to 21 days. Uh, once, assuming that the application was approved, um, loan documents would be sent to the, uh, the business uh, they would sign and then within five days of document signing uh, those funds would be distributed. Um, I think that was in the initial stages and I think that was a part of the um, impetus for the emergency advance because obviously we, we're literally in a, a crisis now so that um, was the average time period I've seen you know all both ends of that range so far, uh, but the uh, the standard is about 18 to 21 days for full processing of the EIDL. And my final question is, are there any organizations giving small businesses help in filling out the application for the COVID-19 financial assistance? And that's to both of you guys. Congressman Price, would you like to go first? Well, the, uh, the effort has been to, to make this uh, as, as user-friendly as we possibly can. So I think the advice that uh, Mr. Sith gave earlier is, is, is very good. I, my, the first, first approach, I think, should be to the uh, SBA, uh, SBA website. And, uh, or if uh, there's a relationship with a, with a lender that you want to activate or reactivate, then, then go directly there. If um, if you if you need technical assistance beyond that, uh, I we we refer people all the time to the Small Business Tech, uh, Technology uh, Development Center (SBTDC), and uh, I think uh, they're they're uh, uh, alert to this and ready to uh, to offer offer good advice. But um, the uh, the first approach should be to the website, which we've made as user friendly as possible. Thank you, Congressman. And just to add on, uh, obviously SBA, as the in particular in dealing with recovery uh, funding, again that website is sba.gov forward slash coronavirus, and there you will have a menu of items uh, that we've talked about today and other general information. So I strongly encourage businesses and and individuals to to review that site periodically for updates. Uh, SBA uh, has strong uh, resource partners in the state. As Congressman Price mentioned, SBA funds a portion of the Small Business Technology Development Centers. They are located, um, while they're located at all our constituent universities, they are operating virtual now, uh, but they are, are meeting with small businesses virtually, assisting uh, with the preparation of, of applications, also helping uh, businesses decide, you know, given all the, the various options, what may or may not be best for them. SBA also funds four women's business centers across North Carolina, 
uh, in Asheville, Charlotte, uh, Durham, and Raleigh uh, combined, and then in Fayetteville. While they focus on women-owned businesses, they, are, they will certainly help all businesses. There are 10 score chapters across the state uh, that are made up of retired executives that also can provide uh, general uh, support through this process. So I encourage uh, individuals not only to uh, utilize the support provided by SBA, uh, we have obviously our, our, our head, uh, main offices here in Charlotte, uh, but we also have an office in uh, Raleigh, Nashville, and Wilmington. Um, and clearly, we're all operating virtually now to respect social distancing, but there is availability of support through all those various sources. Uh, and, and with PPP, your local lender, and, and as I say, patience is, is the watchword as they become familiar with the new uh, guidance on these loans, they are going to be on the front lines as well with the PPP because those loans will actually go through uh, your, your local lender as opposed to EIDL that is direct with SBA. So those are several sources for um, small business support now. Thank you for that, Director Stith and Congressman Price. We uh, very much again appreciate you both sharing some of your time with us today for this virtual town hall meeting. It's very informative, lots of information, lots of questions. Um, obviously, we could get to all the questions um, in this limited time we had for the call, but we will continue to go forward with other avenues to provide a resource for all of our members, particularly our small business folks, as they try to navigate the SBA process. And as we quite frankly, understand more about what is in the federal bill and how all of this plays out. Um, so on behalf, again, of Raleigh Chamber CEO Adrian Cole, myself, and our staff, thank you all for joining the call today. Thank you again, Congressman Price and Director Stiff. We really appreciate your time. I hope everyone has a great, safe, and healthy weekend. And you can visit RaleighChamber.com. And we have lots of information posted on our web page about COVID-19 responses. And again, this call will be posted there as well if you would like to share. So at this time, we're concluded with our call. And we thank everyone again. Have a great weekend. Yeah.